Hey guys, so I'd like to start off by saying I apologize for any construction noise you might be hearing. Um, it's out of my control. There is local authority workers um, currently taking down old wash houses and putting up new children's play areas outside and my neighbours upstairs sounds like they're building themselves a palace. They've been doing, they've been doing decorating, decorating. Um, we had a package delivered and they took it for us back in November and they said they were decorating. They've been decorating since then. Yeah. So apologies for the noises. Also, you will probably hear a little um, grunts and groans from this little guy. This is Rowan. He was born on January 23rd. Um, a surprise home delivery. Uh, I did not quite make it to the hospital. He arrived in my bathroom. Um, but he's good. He's healthy. And I'm, I'm so happy. And he's having himself a little nap, so. I know I'll probably get someone being like, oh, why has he got a pink blanket? When you've only got so many blankets in your house, sometimes you have to give a boy a pink blanket. It's a blanket. He's not going to know. It'll be fine, okay? Just don't tell him when he's older. So, um, I am desperately trying to get back to feeling like myself. So I'm just gonna do a sort of chatty get ready with me and I'm gonna start with a little bit of primer. I'm using the Clarins Beauty Flash Balm. Also apologies for the lighting. Um, it's, it's very blue toned and I, I need to work something out to make it better, but you know, work with what you got, right? So, Rowan is, he was three weeks this week, so he's about three and a half weeks old now. And I just kind of want to get back to feeling like myself. Um, I haven't worn... I've only worn makeup once since he was born and before he was born. Um, I hadn't worn makeup uh, since probably a week. Bef like, not even, not a week, but like a couple of days before my due date. I was due January 13th. So, <laughs> um, he was a little bit over. Just a tad. Uh, that, that was, that was fun. Um... Every time I went to see my midwife for a checkup, uh, she was very much encouraging me to get induced. And I, <laughs> the thought of being induced kind of terrifies me. I've, I've heard many horror stories about being induced, a lot of which ended up in emergency C-sections, which was a path I really wanted to avoid. Um, not just for the vanity reasons of going through an an, uh, an avoidable operation, but it's better f for your child to have a vaginal birth. The the I hate to use the word, but the trauma of being birthed that way is better for them. Um, it's better for their respiratory system and reduces their risk of having asthma and it gets all the glut out of their lungs. Um, so like if it if it is avoidable I would prefer to avoid basically. So <laughs> I did everything possible to try and bring on my labour. I, I did all the walking, I did the pineapple which worked with Luna last time. I, I ate three cans of pineapple and boom she was here. Did not so much happen this time. It didn't even have the, the you know, the desired, what's a polite word, laxative effect. Nothing was happening. So, um, I ended up getting a, a sweep done, um, which I think in America they call it a scrape where they, um, they manually agitate the membranes to try and bring on labour. That was not pleasant. Um, so 
Sorry, I'm not even telling you what I'm doing. I'm putting on a, just a plain sort of pale shadow. This one has a sort of pinky undertone. It's from my Pan Matte palette. I'm just going to zoom you guys in just a little bit there. I mean, I've heard people talk about their um, their smear being painful. I've never had a painful smear. Um, the, the the cervical sweep was painful, so I'm just gonna go in with this orangey color here. It doesn't go on quite as orangey as it looks, but it's a good base. I'm just gonna put this in the crease and transitional area. And sort of in the outer V. You know what, stuff it. I'm just going to put this all over. <laughs> Let's just do it. Focus most of the color on the outside and blend it inwards. So yeah, I went for the cervical sweep. I had a bit of um, bleeding afterwards, which they said was normal. And I was um, booked in for induction I had the sweep on the Monday afternoon on the 22nd sorry this is turning into like a birth story so if you don't want to hear these gory details just click out now I, I want to talk about it so I'm gonna um so yeah on the, the afternoon of the 22nd I had the sweep I had a bit of spotting afterwards and a bit of sort of pressure in my lower abdomen and then the next day, I um, I was fine until I put my daughter for her mid-morning nap. And then I started feeling something. And um, I timed it. And it was, they, they, were, they were very weak contractions. They were about half an hour apart around, and they started about half 11 in the morning. And, um, yeah, they, they carried on at that steady sort of half hour to 20 minute pace throughout the day. And then when I put her to bed that night at eight o'clock, um, that's when, that's when the show started, <laughs> basically. Um, the contractions started coming more and more frequently. Um, they were getting to every 15 minutes, every 10 minutes, every 8 minutes. And then um, I timed them for a whole hour and they were averaging somewhere between 4.5 minutes and 6 minutes. And they were lasting up to a minute 10 apiece. So I called the midwife unit at 20 past 9. So I'm just going to go in with this matte chocolate brown here. Just going to take... Just dab it on because it's a very strong colour. And I'm going to start on the outer and blend forward again. So yeah, I called in at about 20 past 9. And the midwife that I spoke to said that my contractions were still fairly irregular. And, you know, if I wasn't in a, an intense amount of pain or anything, then she didn't see any reason for me to come in. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll hold off for a bit because, you know, my only method of getting there was going by taxi, because by this time, you know, it's, it's half past nine at night, almost. There, there are very few buses that are going up to the hospital, and to be honest, when you're in labour, do you really want to be taking public transport? Um, so I didn't want to have to go all the way there, just be told to come all the way back and pay two taxi fares, and then pay a third one to get there again. So, you know, we decided it would be best for me to stay there. Um, by that time, like I'd taken some paracetamol around dinner time. Or maybe a little after dinner time. I think I took them about half past six, seven-ish. I took some paracetamol. So by this point, the paracetamol is starting to wear off. And next thing I know, these contractions are coming four minutes apart, three minutes apart, two minutes apart, one minute apart, getting to the point where 
I'm so lightheaded that I can't stand up. They're not painful. They're just very, they're just very intense. The pressure is very intense. So I get my boyfriend to call a taxi. I call the midwife unit and say, yeah, the, it's, the things are, things are happening. I should come in now. Um, by this point, it's about 10 to 10. And I just lose the plot. Completely lose all rationality. And I'm saying, okay, we have to go. We have to go way outside. We have to go downstairs and wait outside for this taxi so I can get in it as quickly as possible. And next thing I know, it's those contractions, the end game contractions, the ones that make you roar. And, <laughs> and he's like, no, no, you're not going anywhere. So here's me having a hissy fit by the front door, getting pissed off at him for not letting me go downstairs. And next thing I know, and this is going to be really TMI, but I, I suddenly felt like I needed to go to the toilet. I needed to poo. So I went to the toilet and I, I, I checked to make sure it was poo. It was poo that was coming out. And, you know, I passed it. And I felt as though there was more to come. And I checked again and that was not poo. That, that was his head. I felt his head. So I was like, oh my God, call an ambulance. I'm crowning. I was like, oh my God, feel the head. Call an ambulance. So he's on the phone to the ambulance and, and they, he's, he's asking me questions and saying, oh, how, how far are you? And I was like, I'm crowning. That's how far I am. So, um, yeah. And within maybe um, 10 or less pushes, he was here. Like, for real. There, there was just no time. They, they sent a, they sent a, a small ambulance car and an actual ambulance. Um, the paramedics didn't arrive until like minute, like a minute after he was born. That's how quickly the ambulance got here, but that's how quickly he was born. It was crazy. So I'm just mixing, um. Max Studio Sculpt with Smashbox Studio Skin. I'm just mixing that on the back of my hand here. Because the Studio Skin is a little bit too dark. And the Studio Sculpt. I don't know, there's. I'm not. It's not that the colour's too light, it's just there's something about it that just doesn't work for me on its own. I think it's just a little bit too thick. So yeah, um, everything happened so fast that my partner basically um, dropped the phone on the floor <laughs> and grabbed the baby as he was coming out. And I made an almighty mess of my bathroom. Um, but my partner was like, you know, it's actually not too bad. Last time when I was in the paternity unit he said when he came in afterwards it looked like a murder scene this was this was nothing compared to that um but yeah so the paramedics came cut the umbilical cord and we left at that point my daughter wakes up so <laughs> she doesn't understand what's going on she's all bleary eyed and just looking at these strangers in her house and then she sees the baby covers her face and screams um but this time you know the paramedics really want to get me out they want to get me to the hospital make sure everything's okay with me everything's okay with the baby because i haven't passed the placenta yet at this point um but yeah so we get all downstairs and they want to take me in this like this like gurney chair thing and I'm like no it, it it actually hurts to sit down there there is it really it was oh, that was so painful it hurt more to sit down than it did to give birth um but yeah so we go downstairs and Nick takes Luna down and says goodbye to me in the ambulance and you know away we go off to the hospital um 
that was fun. It's the first time I've ever had an ambulance for me. Um, there's one milestone ticked off, right? Sorry, I'm using my viewfinder as a mirror. Really silly, I should really use the mirror as a mirror, right? Um, in case you're wondering, the brush I'm using is an EcoTools stippling brush and it looks like this and I just spray it with a little bit of um, toner and it just, oh, it works so good for like buffing on foundation. I'm really enjoying it lately. So where was I? So we get to the hospital and um, basically as I move from the gurney to the bed, just as I get onto the bed, the placenta just plops out. So I didn't even have to get the um, injection for helping it come out. So I had to get the, I got the injection last time. Um, and it still took a little longer than they would have liked for it to come out. I apparently have a strong placenta or something. I don't know. But the midwife that met me there was the one I spoke to on the phone. And she was so... She was really upset that I had to do this on my own at home. And um, she was like... She just asked me all these questions about what what it was that changed so suddenly and I just said to her I was like well I I think it must have to do with pain because the only thing that stopped me from coming in was she asked me if I was in pain and I wasn't in pain so I have a really high pain threshold apparently so in future she's gonna ask, she's she said she's gonna ask all um the patients that call her how they handle pain because that can be a deciding factor in things like not not to be I don't mean to brag but birth just it didn't hurt like there was pressure there was a bit of stinging as skin stretches and stuff but it wasn't like oh my god I'm in so much pain please kill me now um I'm very lucky with my ability to handle pain. I don't know, I'm just... I guess I'm just built for this kind of thing. Okay, I'm just gonna put some lip balm on because I've just peeled a bit of skin off and uh, yeah, I've made my lip bleed, awesome. This is the By Terry Bombed Rose. Yeah, so they um, they checked me over, they checked him over and everything was fine. They were really happy with him. They gave him the vitamin K jab. And, um... Oh no. Okay, apparently the last time I used this I put the lid on upside down. No, I can get off. Awesome. I thought I wasn't going to be able to get it out. Um, and everything went well. They weighed him and he was 3.68 kilos, which is just under 8 pounds. It's like on the cusp of 8 pounds. It's like 7 pounds, 14 ounces. Um, which is bigger than... Luna was. She was um, No, I'm telling you absolute fibs. What am I saying? I can't even remember what number I said. Um, three point six eight kilograms. I don't know why I said before, but it was three point six eight kilograms. Um, Luna was only 3.5 kilograms but he was shorter than her but boys do tend to weigh more anyway um, but yeah 
Um, they kept me in overnight for observation and then they did a blood count in the morning to make sure I didn't lose too much blood. Because um, they asked like when like my water was broke and everything. My water didn't break until his... Um, the water's broke as I was giving birth, but his head sort of kept them in. The wars didn't actually come out until his shoulders came out. Like, the, it was just a, and a... And a splash on the floor. Um, Because I remember when I went for my sweep, the mid... It was a trainee midwife that did my sweep. And she said that the wars were really tight on his head. So I kind of expected my wars to go first, but this time it was the other way around. looking a bit dodgy on the viewfinder but everything looks a bit dodgy in the viewfinder doesn't it so yeah um i stayed in overnight got my blood work done in the morning and i was home by six o'clock the following day so that is my birth story. Um, I was not intending to share that today, but it just kind of, it felt right. So there we go. I'm just going in with some Laura Mercier mineral powder. Focusing most of it where I would normally get greasy and then just setting up the Bronze Universal. For highlight, I'm still using the Guerlain Cool Gardenia. It's definitely wearing down the petals now. Um, so as far as having the two of them now, it is a bit... I mean, it's definitely a bit of a culture shock for me. It's definitely a big life change. Uh, just when I was getting used to things, getting, you know, having a little bit of free time and independence for myself. Like, I could leave Luna to just play with her toys while I go on with things. That's now gone. <laughs> so, that's fun. Um, I think the most stressful time for me is first thing in the morning because before... Rowan was born, Luna was quite happy with getting up at half past eight. Quite happy. Now she gets up at seven. And he gets up at seven. So I have to get up at seven. And he wants fed, she wants fed, I would like to get fed. You know, everybody needs their nappies changed and it's all, everything all at once. So, mornings can be a bit of a stress for me and I'm just trying to get into the routine now of, of, you know, not feeling like I need to watch him every second of the freaking day. I'm still in that phase, like, you know, I can't leave him. I can't do anything. <laughs> I'm sure everybody goes through that at the start. Um, I'm just going to take a little bit of NARS orgasm. But yeah, I just need to get back my independence and, you know, be okay with leaving him for a little bit, not constantly being on him or having him constantly on me would be more accurate. Yeah, you know, just because it's it does it does get bit get you a bit down when you are sort of like detached from what you normally do. You can't even you feel like you can't even sit for five minutes and read a book. 
um, God forbid you go for a shower, you know? <laughs> um, I'm just sort of getting out of that sort of period. I think the baby blues hit me a lot harder this time around with having the second with having two children to look after, I don't know. I just, I really wasn't taking care of myself the first week of, the first week of him being in existence. I was, I was like, um, I was a zombie. I was just going through the motions, sleeping on the sofa, um, not changing my clothes. I don't wash my hair for like a week. It was not good. But I feel a lot more like myself now. Um, I feel a lot more confident in my abilities and I feel a lot more together. So, yes. <laughs> and just to finish off the under eyes, I'm going to go back in with that chocolatey brown shade and just run that underneath. And instead of that orangey shade, I'm going to take this sort of um, light yellow. And I'm going to blend that out. And then I'm just going to take some of this shade here. It's like a white with a gold reflex. I'm just going to put this in the inner corner. Because sometimes I wonder if that is what causes um, some postnatal depression for some women is when they have a child and they expect to be able to do all the things that they used to be able to do right away like just get back on the horse and go at it and um just not accepting or taking a while a little while to accept that you know things need to change you're not gonna be able to because that's how I feel like I, I thought I would be able to just jump back in where I left off and it's mm, no not like that at all. For eyeliner I have the brown pencil from Lancome. And just on the inner part I'm gonna go in with this gold pencil from Lancome which is I believe, yeah it's just called gold. <laughs> and I'm just gonna run that in the inner portion here my brows. I'm going to use my Lancome brow pencil just to fill in my brows. But so far, you know, he's, he's been a really good baby. Luna's taken really well to him. She's always, um, she keeps trying to play with him. She doesn't quite grasp that he's too young to play. Um, Luna is now 20 months, so there's going to be like a 19 month gap between them. So it'll be good. She she won't ever really remember a time where he didn't exist. So there's no real room for resentment. Um, she likes to try and hug him and sometimes she'll try and pick him up. So we have to be careful. Um, she can get a bit over enthusiastic with him. Um, like she tries to help with, uh, with nappy changes or like if he's been sick, she'll try and help clean his face and you know not quite cleaning his face she's just shoving a towel in his face um so we do have to be careful she that she doesn't get too rough with him she doesn't mean it i mean she's she's a baby herself really so nothing as malicious is going on but she's she's taken really well to him and she's actually kind of um grown up a bit since his arrival like um she used to really take the mick around like 
breakfast home and lunch home and stuff and she used to want to be babied and coddled and stuff but now she's like very independent and just gets on and eats her food and it's great <laughs> for mascara i'm just gonna use the um sumptuous extreme from estee lauder oh, i made a little bit of a mess oops oh well it happens um, but he's been a really good baby. He's not very prone to having tantrums. Um, like he's not overly fussy or anything. Um, he's breastfed. Um, Luna wouldn't latch, so I ended up expressing for her. But he latched pretty much instantly, and he he really likes breastfeeding. Um, he takes express milk from the bottle as well, but um, um. He, he quite likes the boob <laughs> so um the only time he really gets fussy is when he wants fed and he wants fed now um he does get a lot of like trapped wind um i've had a lot of people just automatically assume it's colic it's not colic it's it's nowhere near severe enough to be colic colic is when you've got like a a baby that can't be settled and screams for like three hours oh, it's a lot of threes they have to for it to qualify as colic i was told they have to be you have to they have to be screaming and be unable to settle them for three hours for three days of the week for three weeks in a row which is no he's not like that at all <laughs> i'm just gonna run a little bit of um brow artist through I really, really need to do something with my brows. I need to sort out my little mustachio situation and I need to cut my hair. Um, like I was saying, like for the first week, I, I wasn't taking care of myself and now I have this like, mm, this knot in my hair that I, every day I, I hack a little bit more at it. It was, it was the size of my fist, this massive knot of hair. Um, it's a lot smaller now. It's just like a little tiny clump somewhere back here, but I'm, it's, it's taken me a week to brush that much out of it. Um, so I'm going to be brushing out my hair and I want to cut a good chunk of it off and layer it and stuff. It's been a while since I did anything with my hair. Um, yeah, I think that's everything sort of baby related that I wanted to talk about. And for lipstick, I'm using Crystal Baby from Estee Lauder's, the nice warm, glossy sheen. I've actually just been kind of using this as a lip balm because it's just such a almost nothing color. But yeah, there we go. That's my sort of little baby update there for you. Um, so yeah, is there anything else I wanted to talk about? So I will be trying to get back to the regular schedule of three days a week. I was really enjoying getting those videos up and everything. Um, I, I'm glad you guys enjoyed my declutter. I feel so much better now that I've done that declutter and I've got all those videos finally out. I just recently, like a couple of days ago, uploaded the final portion, the lipstick declutter part two. I will link in the info box my declutter playlist for you guys. Um, and you can have a, a scope through that if you want to. And, um, yeah, I do have quite a few videos that I'm going to try and get filmed as soon as possible. I have a lot of other things that I probably want to talk about, like update you guys on my project planning um, goals and stuff and talk about like just life adjustments and such and finances and things. Um, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. Um, I also wanted to know what you guys thought of weight loss videos or book videos on this channel because so I have a booktube channel but meh you know 
I don't really want to be uploading on tons of different channels. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to maybe do like a like a monthly book video kind of thing and um, maybe track my weight loss, my post my post baby weight loss after post what am I even trying to say? But track like my post baby weight loss on this channel. Um, but if that's not something you guys be interested in then you know. Um, let me know and I will catch you guys really really soon thank you so much for watching thank you so much for sticking with me and hello to all the new subscribers that have appeared in my absence so um i'm so happy to have you guys here so i'll see you guys next time thank you so much for watching and bye bye